In the first part of this episode, I set out the context for how statistical power analysis can enlighten us about the effectiveness of the optimizations we're undertaking. Let me give you an example. If a company wants to find out if there's a statistically significant preference for one product compared to another, or a difference between two drugs, then one of the most important things they'll need to determine upfront is what the sample size needs to be for the study. The sample size that will give them the level of statistical significance they require. And they'll often use the concept of power analysis to do that. Statisticians will tell you that much of the hard work goes into carefully planning out a study prior to doing anything else, and they wouldn't even dream of collecting data before doing that pre-work. So why should it be any different for algorithmic traders who are trying to ascertain the optimal parameters to use in a trading strategy? If we are going to be alpha algo traders at the top of our game, we need to act like statisticians and understand how to plan our own studies and optimizations. So what is statistical power analysis? Well, it's an incredibly useful tool. It can be calculated to quantify the confidence we should have in the results obtained. Power analysis answers questions like, how much statistical power should my study have? How big a sample size do I need? And this latter statement obviously is of particular interest to us. And in fact, is probably the most common use of power analysis. The formal definition is this. The statistical power of a hypothesis test is the probability of detecting an effect if there is a true effect present to detect. And translating this into our context, we could be more specific and say that the statistical power of an optimization is the probability of detecting the best edge if there is a true edge present to detect. Now on the forums following episode one, there was quite a bit of talk about so what is the sample size that we need in the optimization? Is it 500 trades, 1,000, 2,000? Well, remember, that brief study we performed before was based on one system with an edge and all of the others with zero edge. So although it very clearly illustrated an issue that we need to address, it wasn't that representative of a real optimization. In reality, different parameter values that we're testing will have a range of edges some positive, some negative. So at the moment, we don't have the information we need to answer that question. And that's what power analysis will give us. So let's take a look at what a typical power analysis chart looks like. So along the x-axis, we've got the sample size and you'll notice I've used a logarithmic scale there. And on the y-axis, we have the power, which if you remember is the probability of obtaining a statistically significant result. The curves always asymptote out at that 1.0 level because it's a probability. And what you'll notice is that as sample size increases, the probability that we're going to obtain a statistically significant result also increases. Now, for systems that you've developed that have an excellent edge, a very strong edge, what will happen is that this line will reach that high probability much more quickly and much more easily with low sample sizes. If, however, your trading strategy is much weaker and it doesn't have as good an edge, then it will take much longer to reach the, the asymptote level. And in reality, you'd never be able to get sample sizes large enough in order to have that high probability with those systems. Now, the level of power that most statistical studies aim to provide is around the 0 0.9 mark. And that means it gives them the ability to get the confidence in the study they've undertaken without needing absolutely huge sample sizes as part of their study. So if we use that as a basis, let's take this middle system here, the, the one with the, the medium level of edge. 
So if we were going to use the 0.9 level, the way that you would find the sample size you require would be to do that. So in this particular example, we're looking at about 80,000 in order to, to get the confidence and the probability that we would need to have that confidence. Well, this is just an illustration. So how do we get the actual numbers for an optimization? Well, last time we used a, a model which just used an Excel simulation, but that's not really up to the job for this kind of analysis that we want to do now. So what I have done is developed an application which enables us to look at this and perform a simulation based on a, an optimization with a range of edges across all of those parameter values. So let's now cut over to the PC and take a, a look at the detail of that particular application and the results that it's giving us.